Young people make up nearly two-thirds of Iran's 69 million citizens. Two million of them will enter the workforce this spring. Half will not find jobs. Add to that the harsh religious morality laws, the fact that self-righteous, stern eyes are always watching. Well, Kuna Naderi, um, a Canadian, teaches opinion, English here. I don't think most people are happy. I mean, they hardly have any fun. They have a lot of financial problems from what I see. I mean. A year and a half ago, the outlook was sunnier. Iranians had just voted massively for reform politicians. People actually thought their votes would matter, that the Ayatollahs would have no choice but to accept the people's will, that freedom and prosperity might be in the offing. Voters had demands. Very uh, free life, and to live any, any kind of life will win. If they do not listen to us, maybe we have it's going to happen a new revolution. We need uh, uh, changes, uh, big changes. Well, things have indeed changed for the worse. Reform newspapers like this one, filmed last year, have been closed, their editors jailed. Reform attempts to loosen religious restrictions have been crushed. Reform politicians have been imprisoned for making speeches in their own parliament. Tehran journalist Shams El Vozin has tasted the anger of the clerics. He has been cited for bravery by the Committee to Protect Journalists for his defiance of the system. He does not, for example, begin sentences with the seemingly compulsory phrase, in the name of God, the compassionate and the merciful. Cautiously, with the restraint of the persecuted, he explains that people here want change in their government and that the future will hold danger if their demands go unanswered.